So we're going to now move on to Sue England. Sue England is from the UK. She's a lawyer, regular feminist question time speaker. She's an expert on international human rights law and part of the Women's Declaration International Laws Committee and many other um, uh, skills and attributes, but I'll leave it there. And uh, Sue England is going to talk to us about freedom of assembly. So thank you so much, Sue, and over to you. So here we are, freedom of speech, at assembly in the UK and in, in the European Convention of Human Rights. So this was built around the UK, but the UK is in the Council of Europe, the 46 countries in the Council of Europe. So this is all the same stuff for people in those countries. At the same time, it all comes from the UN Declaration on Human Rights too. So in fact, it covers all countries in the UN. So those people who are outside the UK, don't go away. You can apply this stuff in any country that you are too. And we're going to look at the most fundamental and essential principles. Everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and to freedom of association with others. So this is what's in all the human rights documents, okay? particularly this Council of Europe document, but it's in the UN document, you should find something exactly the same in your own constitution, wherever you are in the world. And the point about this is absolutely fundamental, because if you're going to operate a democracy, you have to have freedom of speech, you have to have exchange of information, you have to be able to be in contact with others about your ideas. So that's freedom of speech and expression, but also we all know throughout the ages, this also means that people have to have the right to demonstrate on the streets, but also to meet up with others, to hold meetings, to contact one another. So this is uh, freedom of association, and freedom of assembly in these slightly technical terms. We're assembling here today, even though we're all over the world, we're having an assembly. We are associating freely with others as we choose. And that's what it's all about. And it's absolutely fundamental to running any democracy. So that is an almost absolute right in that everybody has it at all times, in all places. And the limitations on it, restrictions here, are very, very limited. So they should only be, as they say, prescribed by law. But that means if there are going to be any limitations in your country, they have to be put in law, they have to be democratically decided, they have to be available for you to access and understand. You need to know exactly where you are on all this. And next, those laws can only be made if there are necessary restrictions in a democratic society, okay? And here we've got the European ones, but it's the same in the UN. Well, if it was necessary for national security, public safety, maybe some huge demonstration, you know, where you're just simply frightened for people's safety, for preventing disorder or crime, okay, but very, very, these, these, these rules are very, very tightly limited, protecting health, morals, and also protecting the rights and freedoms of others. But in this context, everybody has the right to speak. So you can only go a very short way with that, talking about the rights and freedoms of others. They can talk themselves, they can assemble themselves somewhere else on a different occasion. They can't interfere with you. So this is Article 11 of the European Convention on Human Rights. So throughout Europe, you'll find something very similar in your own constitutions. And in Britain in particular, it's also embedded in the Human Rights Act, okay? So as soon as you see writing about these things, you'll be finding this. Um, these cases, are decided in British courts, but also then the controlling court is in Strasbourg, the European Court of Human Rights, which a previous speaker's already mentioned, okay? This is a fundamental right in a democratic society, and it must not be interpreted by the police, 
by your politicians, by your courts, restrictively. Any limitation should be as limited as possible. It covers private meetings. It covers meetings in public places. They can be static. You can have processions, etc. And of course, do not forget, we are assembling now. We are associating now. You can do all this online as well. And so it covers the participants and it also covers the people who are actually organizing this assembly, this gathering as well, whether it's online or in the streets or in a meeting place. The convention is a living instrument and these principles are broad principles. So you don't have to worry about, well, what were they talking about 20 years ago? It applies today in modern life, in circumstances now. So here are a few examples, some traditional in a sense, some new, but we have a case here about a flash mob in Russia recently protected, gatherings at private cafes, uh, by communal meetings, meaning sort of in the sense groups between uh, different communities, cultural gatherings, they're covered by assembly as well, this right to assemble, religious and spiritual meetings, press conferences, processions, a sit-in where a, there was a protest going on, and in fact also a protest outside a courthouse, for example, where people were protesting about what was going on inside. Anything, it's all covered, even if it's something new, like a flash mob. You have the right then, obviously, because you're free to associate and make meetings with anybody you like, to choose the time, the place, and as they call it, the modalities of the assembly. You can decide where you want to meet. You can decide the time, etc. You may, if you want some police protection, want to sort of negotiate it with them, but that's, that's, you know, you are free to do that. No state can tell you where you're going to meet or at what time or whatever, except in the most limited circumstances where they're trying to, for example, protect public safety. It only protects peaceful assembly. So where organizers or participants have got violent intentions, and you can show that, that what they then incite violence, or they are going so far as to reject the foundations of the democratic society, that does allow limitations. But as we've all seen, you know, with Maya Forstata, there's an awful lot of talked about, you know, damaging the foundations of a democratic society. That's almost impossible. That's almost impossible uh, barrier, as it were, to reach. For most purposes, a democratic society has to run on freedom of speech and assembly in all circumstances, often in, in every place, okay? So at the bottom, the couple, last couple of, next couple of sentences, so you can only interfere as the state if it's necessary in a democratic society. If you've got a real legitimate aim, like public safety, something like that, and there is a pressing social need. And if there is any interference, you will be going to the courts and they will look at this very, very toughly indeed and say, how can you possibly in these circumstances be justifying people not talking to one another, not exchanging information, not being free to gather together with who they choose? So during a rally, if they try and disperse you or arrest you, that's an interference in your right to have peaceful assembly. Obviously here I am thinking about meet, you know, actual meetings, because if it's peaceful, it's allowed. As long as it's peaceful, it's allowed. And then also the state is not allowed to take other restrictions against you, to try and shut down these freedoms, which would be, for example, doing things before the assembly, after the assembly, which of course are really intended to intimidate you or frighten you, stop you in the first place, or then later on, give you the idea later on that you'd better not do that again, because now life is gonna to get tough 
for you or there are going to be punitive measures taken against you. They cannot do that. You have this absolute right to assemble peacefully. And also, when obviously um, there's maybe a difference between say public safety requirements or restrictions, and then sometimes restrictions based on the content of what this assembly is going to be about. Well, those things, content-based restrictions, are subject to even greater scrutiny than restrictions which might be about a technical nature. For example, you know, how are we going to safeguard people? How are we going to get large numbers of people in and out of a space? You know, safely, things like that. If at the beginning you start to talk about what you want to talk about, no way. No, that's going to be really strictly construed because you would be having to do something which is threatening violence or indeed sort of you know, talking about ending democracy, for example. So, it, and they also comment, it's very rare to legitimately bar any organization when you're conveying a message, when you're sort of attacking the message that these people for example, us are giving, especially where the main target of the criticism is the authority which is trying to stop you. In other words, if you're the government or the police or politicians or other groups, well, you know, obviously they will try and shut you down. This is a no-no. Well, as soon as you're criticizing another powerful group or the government, that's the very reason that you should have this right to free assembly and it can't be interfered with and this similar the same thing preventing disorder that's got to be interpreted very very narrowly by the police by the government anybody who is trying to uh, put restrictions it doesn't matter what your national government calls these meetings or these demonstrations that's irrelevant. You know, they've got no control over that. It's a really fundamental, wide ranging idea, assembling in any way, in any place, using any media, etc. What they call it is completely irrelevant. Once for us, the UK court or the court in Strasbourg says it's a demonstration within the scope of protection. You are peacefully assembling and you're peacefully talking to one another and communicating between yourselves or with the outside world. It is covered by this protection. So obviously in the light of the events that we saw in Britain recently, the Bristol event um, about which there is now an excellent video and I didn't have time to get the link so if anybody wants to put it up on chat that would be very helpful okay but we have the Bristol event run by Posey Parker which is now about four weeks ago and then we have the event in Nottingham which was a booked event because it was going to take place in this case inside inside a library run by Nottingham city council. So let's think about very quickly about the practicalities of, of these two events. And obviously here, in the first case, the state, the government is not trying to stop this meeting. It was taking place outside in Bristol. What was happening was opposing forces were trying to shut it down. And to a certain extent, they did because of um, you know, drowning out the voices of the women who were speaking, simply using other no noise, um, and also being there and milling around, making sure that in fact the women in many cases were not able to stand where they wanted to. And so the, the problem was that the police were actually there but they didn't tackle these limitations that were then being forced on these women by the opposing group. Now, that was clearly against the law. If there are opposing groups 
they are not allowed to shut down other groups, freedom of assembly, which obviously they were trying to do. And it's up, the, up to the government to make sure that doesn't happen. Every group should be able to freely and fully assemble. And the police there, the British government, you know, representing the British government, did not do that. Those other people were perfectly free to counter demonstrate if they wanted to, but not to an extent that was interfering with the other group. So this is going, we have to bear this in mind always, and we have to understand these fundamental principles. And there has to be much more, for example, in the UK, pressure on the police over this. You are to keep these groups separate. And for example, you should not be allowing noise to interrupt the first assembly, the women, because that means they are not fully using their right of assembly. And then in the other case, obviously what happened here was there was a direct interference by the state. Uh, the public authority, Nottingham City Council, because then they decided to cancel it on the basis of what those women, what, well, what they thought the women were going to talk about. This is completely illegal. Unless they had evidence that the people at that meeting were intending to incite violence or to have or to be violent i don't know running around the library beating up small children i don't know they have absolutely no right to interfere with this meeting those people there are assembling and they are free to say what they want and you can't challenge this meeting on that basis and then you certainly can't stop it and say you are not free you know, to choose your time and place of where you are to meet. So from what I saw um, over the past couple of weeks now, I suppose it's a couple of weeks since that event, there is definitely going to be legal proceedings about that because everything that the council did was wrong. And I'm sure that they are crowdfunding for it, I'm pretty sure, okay? So we must, pursue that case. And there may also be a case against the Bristol event as well. But then finally, that's why we are working on now <laughs> setting these principles out and in more detail for everybody. So hopefully very soon you'll be able to get from WDI, um, I don't know what it's going to be, three or four pages maybe, which will explain to you what your rights are in an assembly and what the police should be doing and shouldn't be doing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we can start actually operating these rights in practice. Some people who've been on other demonstrations, for example, may have received similar training from other organizations. There, are, there is quite a lot written about this, but it is because we're seeing this complete breach of human rights, we must make sure that we ourselves get tooled up read up and if we go to any of these things we have a much clearer idea of what our rights are before we get there. <laughs>